Irina asks, I'm working with a couple, uh, two pretty big withdrawers. It's really hard to get things going in session. The wife wants to have kids and the husband does not. When he talks about deciding he doesn't want to have kids and the wife feels devastated, and then the husband feels bad and guilty for her pain. Yeah, this is agonizing for the clinician, for the couple. And I'm impressed that the wife can contact her pain when she's confronted with maybe her worst fear about having to decide, what does this mean? My husband, my partner is clear. He doesn't want to have kids. I do. What do we do? And that's a version of agony, living agony. And for that female partner to be also a withdrawer, to be able to feel that pain. Kudos to you, Irene. That's hard. That's great. I would want to help the male withdrawer get below feeling badly and guilty because to me, that isn't primary enough. It sounds like she, the female withdrawer can go closer to primary or in primary. And yet he, you know, I'm curious what happens for him when Irina tries to get him to go closer to primary. We have one closer to primary and one sounding not so close to primary, which means he's in a different place process wise. And so he'll feel badly and guilty. And then what does he do? He shuts down a little bit. He moves away. He gives her space. Does he empathize with her? Can he grieve with her? Can they grieve together? Can they talk open heartedly about what this means about their connection and their union? So I guess I'm hearing two things. One is that He's not really in primary. He feels bad and guilty, but that's not necessarily primary. Even though it'll feel agonizing to get him to go below the bad, feeling badly and guilty, that's too secondary. I want him to be in his fear of losing her, for instance. I want to know what his fears are. I want to know how his fear comes alive. I want to know about his sadness. I want to know how he's feeling the devastation of this big difference between them. And then the other thing is, no matter what, it's going to be agonizing. Even when you get him in primary and she's in primary, they are both going to be suffering tremendously. And, and that's why it's hard to bring him closer to primary because we're amplifying his suffering. But if this couple has a chance of bonding through their mutual agony, that's what's needed. Maybe they're going to decide not to be together. That would mean I wouldn't ask him to go any deeper because I have no interest in amplifying people's suffering unless we're trying to stay together and build a bonding moment and create more attachment security, even while we tolerate this massive difference between us. That's talk about messy right there, that too. Right, right. You know, Catherine, we've talked about redefining a good session. And yeah. This isn't the kind of session we're going to go, wow, that felt, what a contact high from their love. We're just not going to, there's some sessions and some topics that will, that's not what's going to happen. Yeah. And we have to tolerate that. That doesn't mean it wasn't a great session, actually. Right. Because when you amplify the suffering, which is counterintuitive for most of us, it's emotion moving and emotion moving is health. There's potential for connection and there's clarity. And when you amplify the suffering, it shrinks it, it transforms it, whether it can become relational or not. At least it's made relational with Irina. Yeah. And he he will get some benefit from making a suffering. And maybe there's a way, I don't know, Irina, if you've done this or want to consider doing another individual session for each to amplify his suffering, to yeah. help him, this withdrawal, get in contact with it experientially. Yeah. Which might be a little easier to, to do because he's protective of her and he doesn't want to hurt her more. Yeah. So working on their re relationships behalf, there's could be good judgment call to do individual session or two for each to just amplify the suffering so that he gets the benefit of being in contact with it and he can actually share more and hold her pain. Because right now what's happening is she can go closer to her pain, but he can't hold it. Right. And right. that separates them even more. They're in this very, they're in very different places about this important content area in their life. Should we have kids or not? Who wants kids or who doesn't? But then on a process level, they're separated and they're in different places. Right. Lots right. of words, Jen. I hope I'm making sense. No, no, it's all good. And, and Irene is actually saying, thank you. Yes, this is absolutely right. Great. So, okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. On point. For more hot tips on emotionally focused therapy, go to theeftcafe.com and sign up for our newsletter where you will receive short little clips like the one you just watched.